This conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, we have discussed about data management and we have discussed what exactly data management and what is the use and how can we manage the data in our Salesforce objects and what are the various ways that we have in Salesforce to manage the data we have discussed. Yesterday we have discussed about few ways to manage the records inside our objects like page layouts and we have identified few limitations in page layouts also so that we are moving forward to Apex programming. In Apex programming also we can perform all the DML operations on your object records but here also we have few limitations. So to move ahead to that feature data import wizard and data import wizard is a cloud based feature given by Salesforce which is used to perform some bulk import operations but we can't do any export operations through data import wizard only import operations we can like insert update upset upset means what combination of insert and update combination so we can do these operations by using data import wizard but in data import wizard we have identified few limitations that data import wizard will not be supporting to import the records in all salesforce objects it will support all the custom objects of salesforce fine but upon managing the records inside the standard objects import wizard will support only five standard objects not more than that only five standard objects like account contact lead solution campaign member only these five standard objects it will support it's a hundred percent common question in every interview and in every admin certification 201 okay now so now in this case data import wizard will be supporting only five standard objects but it won't support the remaining standard objects of salesforce so in this case to avoid these kind of problems in order to export the records from the objects we are using the help of a feature called as data export okay data export because data import wizard will be purely supporting import operations but no export operation that means exporting in the sense deleting the records from the object and then we can fetch the records from the object we can store it to our local system in the form of a csv file so in this case data export with data import wizard will not be supporting the export operations to overcome these limitations we have to use one more feature that is data export okay data export feature so what is this a data export data export feature is used to export the records from your objects like i'm having so many standard objects i have so many custom objects available inside my organization whatever the objects data that you want to export we can able to export those records also so by using this data export wizard we can export the data from one or more number of objects also in one shot in one shot we can able to export the data from multiple objects also at a time salesforce will collect all those objects data place inside the csc file that csc file will be storing into a local system automatically by default but in this case upon exporting the records by using this data export feature we have two mechanisms first one we can export the records manually also like for example every day i would like to take the backup whatever the records that we have i would like to take the backup of the records every day it's my responsibility as a developer or as an administrator so as an administrator it is our responsibility every day we have to take the backup of the data why because is today night what will happen we don't know suppose if i'm not taking the backup of the data if today night if my salesforce server has been crashed if my entire server has been crashed the whole data will be lost 
Then in this case, without the data, how can we run my business? How can we interact with the customers? It will be very difficult. For that reason, I want to take the backup of the data every day. It's a developer's responsibility and administrator's responsibility also. So in this case, if I'm taking the backup of the data every day, so now till now or till today, what are the operations we have done? What are the customers we have captured? All the data is there inside my local system. I will stay, store this file in some separate server also. Suppose, for example, today night, if my server has been crashed, then I can use this backup data as a reference. So what are the data that we have taken as backup? We can use that backup data and we can able to run the business without any impact. For that reason, we need to take the backup of the data also. So in this case, taking the backup of the data will be very, very difficult as a manual so that we can make it scheduled also. Based on the required time, based on the required period of intervals, based on the periodical intervals, we can able to make this process to be scheduled like every month last working day or every month last day of that month take the backup of that whole month data store into my local system suppose in future if my application is not working if my server has been crashed i will use this backup of the data to run my business so that we can take this backup of the data as manual also or we can make it as scheduled also so both the manual export schedule export both the operations are available in data export feature so data export feature is allows us to export the data from one or more salesforce objects it will support all standard all custom objects of your salesforce not only the custom all the standard objects all the custom objects it will support only to export that means to get the data from the object but we can't insert we can't update the records okay by using this data export only to export the data we are using data export feature then where it is available let me give you the navigation over here okay clear now let's see make a note of this one data export by using this a feature we can export we can export the records from one or more salesforce objects at a time and we can store the data inside the local device local device so that we can use these records as the reference so that we can use these records as a reference. It supports only export operations. Only export operations. Export operations from all standard and all custom objects. We can export the records manually or we can make it scheduled. We can make it scheduled based on the periodical intervals. We can make it as scheduled based on the periodical intervals. Then where is this data export operation feature is available? Just we can go to that quick find box. Click on setup menu. Search for the option data export in quick find box. Quick find box. Select the required objects. Check boxes. Sorry. Click on export now. Export now button. Select the required objects. Check boxes. <coughs> Select the required objects. Check boxes. 
to export the records. Click on export button. This is the navigation we used to follow in order to export the records from your Salesforce objects. Done? Now, so let me show you where exactly this data export feature is available. And then we'll move forward to the next one, data loader. So this is the actual feature which we are going to use in the real time for the data management and data migrations. It's a common question in most of the interviews. So what exactly the difference between data import wizard and data loader? Or simply they will raise a question, difference between import wizard, data loader. Import wizard or data import wizard, both are same, no change. Some people will be giving the complete name data import wizard. Few people will use a shortcut name, simply import wizard, which is used to import the data, that's it. Okay, now. Let's see where exactly the data export operation is available. I'm going to my Salesforce arc. Now, so go to the quick frame box. Search for the option data export. Search for the option data export. Click on this data export option. Now, if you want to export the data here, then we can click on export now button or we can make it as scheduled. Depends upon the requirement, we can make it scheduled also based on your application requirement over here. Now, click on this export now. So now it is indicating all the objects. So whatever the objects are available in Salesforce, all the object names will be getting visible over here in the form of these checkboxes. Every object name is visible along with the checkboxes here, including standard, including custom, all the object names will be getting populated over here. Like we are having custom objects also, branch object, patient object, position object, hiring manager, candidate these are the five custom objects we have created including all standard also but if it is import wizard it will support all custom and five standard but now it is supporting all standard all custom objects also both it will support as part of data export so it depends upon the requirement whatever the objects data you want to export select those objects respect to check boxes over here whatever you want and then we can able to click on export button. It will be exporting the records automatically to your local system over here, start export. Okay. So in this case, what objects data you want to export, select the respective objects checkboxes and then click on start export button. It will be exporting the data to your local device automatically. 
So to import the records, we have to use import wizard. To export the data, we are using data export feature. But in this case, when coming to the import wizard, it is supporting only insert update. That's it. Now export operation will be performing only exporting the data from the object. But what about the remaining operation? Sometimes I want to delete the records also. Then how can we do that? Do we have any such kind of operations? No. In these features, we don't have. In these tools, we don't have this operation. So that Salesforce people has introduced one more tool called as data loader tool. Okay, data loader tool. Data loader is a tool which has been built by the Salesforce by using Java programming. Data loader is purely built upon Java programming. So if you want to install that data loader into a local system, then we should install Java first. Not the complete Java software, JDK and the JRE. Okay, Java development kit, Java runtime environment. If requires, you need to install Zulu also. Okay, if requires, we need to install Zulu also. Because Zulu is one of the security update for Java. Zulu is one of the security update for Java over here. So we need to install JDK, Java development kit, and then second one, JRE, Java runtime engine, that is also called as Java runtime environment, which is used to run that Java application. Okay, now. So now here in this case, when coming to the data loader, data loader is a client app. Client app means what here, which requires installation. It's purely on-premise application. Data loader is purely an on-premise application which requires installation first. Okay, which requires installation first. First of all, download the data loader from your Salesforce organization, install into your local system, then only we can start utilizing that. Okay, then only we can start utilizing that. So in this case, whenever we are using this data loader tool, then we have to install this JDK and the JRE first. Install the JDK and the JRE. If requires, we have to install Zulu also. And from there, we can able to install this data loader tool and we can start performing both import and export operations. Data loader will support both import operations and export operations both. We no need to use two separate tools. One is for import, one is for export. Just the data loader tool is sufficient to do both the operations in one go. So both the operations we can do. Import operations also, export operations also. Both we can do at a time with the help of a single tool that is called as data loader tool. But data loader is purely an on-premise tool which requires installation first. It's a client application. It's a client application. We have to install it first here. Clear? Okay, just give me a minute. I will be back. Hello.
So let's see. As part of this data loader, data loader is an on premise tool which requires installations inside your local device. So just we need to configure the JDK and the JRE, or else directly we can install Open JDK also. Whenever you are installing Open JDK, it will install both the JDK, JRE, and the Zulu. All these three things will be getting installed in one shot. Okay, I will give you the link of this open JDK also. Just you can install inside your local device. If Java is already configured in your system, you no need to do anything. All these things here that will be installed directly. Okay, now let's see. By using this data loader tool, we can perform both import operations, export operations. All the operations we can do. Like we can do the insert operation, update operation, upset operation delete operation hard delete operation export and the export all these are the seven operations so by using data loader we can do total seven operations insert update delete absurd and then hard to delete and then export export all we'll see what is delete hard to delete everything we'll see one by one with the practical because this is the tool which we are using in the real time Okay, now, so in this case, by using this data loader tool, we can perform both import operations and export operations also both on Salesforce objects. Here we can raise a question, sir, will this tool will support all the standard objects of Salesforce? Yes, it's not like as import wizard. Import wizard is supporting only five standard objects, but data loader tool will support to perform import and upper of export operations on all standard, all custom objects of Salesforce. It may be any standard object, including lead, campaign, account, contact, opportunity, everything. All the standard objects it will support and all the custom objects also. It will support to perform the operations on all these objects as well. Now, in this case, here you can raise a question. Sir, by using this data loader, upon performing the operations on the subject records, do we have any limitation that only this many number of records we can process through data loader at a time? Yes. Here also, we are having some limitation. Data loader will allow us to process maximum of 5 million records at a time. 5 million records. 5 million means how many? Not 5 lakhs, 50 lakhs. 1 million, 10 lakhs. Okay, 1 million, 10 lakhs. So totally 50 lakhs of records we can able to process at a time. Okay, by using this data loader tool, we can able to process maximum of 50 lakhs of records at a time. Okay, this is the limitation. If it is import wizard, 50,000. If it is data loader, 50 lakhs records you can process. Sometimes you can raise a question, sir, if you want to process more than 50 lakhs, then hmm. in this case, we have to go for Apex programming again. In Apex programming, there is a feature called as a batch programming. Through batch programming, we can process maximum of 50 million records at a time. That means five crore records you can process in one shot by using batch programming through Apex. Okay, now. So in this case here, how can we use this data loader tool? Okay, how to use this data loader tool? Now, let's see. Now, hmm. now to process this 50 lakhs record will be taking hardly two seconds. Two seconds. The maximum time Salesforce will take to perform a transaction is 10,000 milliseconds. 10,000 milliseconds means 10 seconds max, not more than that. Okay, if it is a very complex operation, it will take 10 seconds. That is the maximum time Salesforce will take. Usually, these kind of operations will be performing within some milliseconds, maximum two seconds, not more than that. Okay. So now in this case, here, let's see. So why Salesforce has given this kind of limitation for data loader also? Because this is the most commonly using tool in the real time. In most of the cases, we are using this data loader to perform both import and export operations. Then why Salesforce has given this limitation? Basically, this 50 lakhs records limitation is not because of data loader. It's because of Excel sheet. 
excel sheet now whenever we are using this excel sheet here upon using this excel sheet in this excel sheet how many records we can able to place excel sheet is having the limitation that we can able to have maximum of 50 lakh rows not more than that it is the limitation of excel sheet okay so because it is indicating this is the first row second row third row fourth row fifth row like that here 50 lakh rows that we can have in excel sheet not more than that because of this excel sheet limitation salesforce has given the limitation in data loader also data loader can support up to maximum of 50 lakhs in cards okay because without this excel sheet we can't supply the input values to that data loader that's what here this excel sheet is already having some limitation so that here data loader will support to process maximum of 5 million records not more than that okay now so now here in this case let's see when coming to the data loader whenever we are performing the operations on your object record through data loader whatever the records we need to insert whatever the records we need to update whatever the records we need to delete now these records information we have to pass to the data loader in the form of that csv file okay the csv file also exactly same like as excel sheet that is also same excel sheet but the extension will be dot csv file okay now so in this case Whenever if you want to process the records, we have to pass this input records in the form of a CSV file here. Input will be dot CSV. Okay, CSV file. Suppose sometimes if I'm exporting the data, then those exported records also placing in the form of a file dot CSV. So it may be input or it may be output also. Okay, input file or output file both will be having in the same format that is dot csv comma separated value file. So we have to supply the input to the data loader in the form of dot csv file format. And whenever we are exporting the records to a local system from Salesforce objects, those exported data also will be placing inside the file in the form of dot csv file format. So both input files, output files formats are purely dot csv file format. So right now, Salesforce is purely supporting that CSC file formats. It won't support the remaining file formats like as Excel sheets, or Notepad, PDF, TSV. It won't support only CSC file formats will be supporting the Salesforce right now. Clear? Understood the concept now? Next. In this case, by using this data loader, we are performing these operations on our Salesforce subject records. So while installing this data loader, we have two flavors are available. Data loader has comes up in two flavors. First one, data loader for Windows. Second one, data loader for Mac. Because nowadays, most of the people are using MacBooks. That means iOS platform devices from Apple. So in this case here, most of the people from abroad countries that are using Apple's iPhone. That means the, like as MacBooks, which is purely built upon okay, iOS platform. So in this case, when coming to the data loader, previously we are having only one format that is data loader for Windows. Only on Windows operating system it will support. On the remaining operating systems, it won't support it at that time. So nowadays, almost from five to six years, now usage of MacBooks are very, very high. So many people are using MacBooks. That's what here Salesforce also introduced one more flavor of data loader that is data loader for Mac. Depends upon the operating system which you are using inside the device, we have to install the corresponding flavor of data loader into your local system. If you are using Windows operating system, install the data loader of data loader for Windows. If you are using an Apple MacBook, we have to install data loader for Mac. Depends upon the operating system that we have, we need to install the associated flavor of data loader inside your local device. Clear? Now, so now here in this case, so let's see. Once the data loader tool has been installed, how can we log in into the data loader tool? Because once the tool has been installed, directly it won't connect to your Salesforce organization. We have to log in first. How to log in into the data loader? How the tool will look like? Okay, now let's see here. Now, before going to that, just you can make a note point over here. Okay, now data loader. data loader is a client app client app or on-premise application 
and premier application which requires installation inside the device first which requires installation inside the device first now the prerequisite to install data loader data loader we have to install jdk and jari jari version 11.0 inside the device as it is purely built upon built upon java programming <coughs> by using data loader we can perform both import and export operations and salesforce object regards it supports to process it supports to process all the dml operations on all standard and all custom objects inside the organization. It supports to process all DML operations on all standard and all custom objects inside the organization. So every object it will support. So upon processing the record through data loader, data loader will support to process the records in standard objects also custom objects also both it will support every standard object every custom object also now we have to supply the records to the data loader in the form of that csu file format we have to supply the records to the data loader in the form of .csv file format and it will export the records to the local device in .csv format and it will export the records to the local device in .csv format. now data loader allows us to process maximum of 5 million records at a time we can process maximum of 5 million records at a time Done with these points.
dan sebelah. Then everyone. So let's see. By using this data loader, we are performing the operations on the bulk records at a time. Now let's see. So what will happen behind the screen? Now let me explain this concept now. Let me go to that data management. Now, yesterday we have discussed about this import wizard process here. Import wizard is purely supporting import operations on your object record. If it is a data loader, what it will do? Now, let me explain. How the data loader will work? Now, let me explain. Now, let's see. I'm having my objects here. I would like to perform the import operations on my object through data loader. So I'm using this data loader tool. Through this data loader, we can perform these operations. So data loader is having the capability to perform both import operations inside your Salesforce object. And it is supporting export operations also both. We can insert, we can fetch the records both. So now it will support, okay, both. Let's see the difference. It will do only import operation, only one way direction. That's it, no export operation, we can't fetch. But when you go to the data loader, data loader will perform both import operations and export operations also. Now, import. And then export export operations so what are the records you are going to process we need to supply these records to the data loader in the form of that csc file we have to supply the records in the form of that csc file so this is the input file format the input file format will be always the dot csv we have to supply so now here you can raise a question for example Inside my Excel sheet, I have placed some five records or six records, seven records, thousand records, one lakh, whatever. For example, this is the first record, second record, and then third record, and then fourth, and then fifth, and then sixth, and then seventh. Seven records I have placed. I'm trying to be inserting these seven records inside my object here. No data loader will take each and every record insert. Upon inserting these records, what it will do is it will take the first record inserted, second record inserted, third record inserted, fourth record failed. Because in the fourth record, for mandatory field, I did not supply the value. There is a mandatory field is available inside my account object. For that field, I forgot to supply the value for one of the mandatory fields. If you am not passing the value for any of the mandatory field, automatically record cannot be accepted. Record will be getting cancelled. So in this case, what will happen in this case? In the middle of the insertion, the fourth record has been failed. What Salesforce will do in this case? What about the remaining records? Will the whole transaction will get rolled back? Or will it be continuing with the remaining records as it is? No, it will continue. That means what? Data loader is purely supporting partial processing mechanism. What do you mean by partial processing mechanism? Upon processing the records, upon inserting or upon updating or upon deleting, whatever anything, upon performing the operations one by one, one by one, one by one, in the middle of the processing, if any of the record has been failed, simply it will ignore the record, it will continue with the remaining records as it is here. This kind of implementation is called as partial processing mechanism. Okay, now in this case, data loader purely supports partial processing mechanism. So upon inserting these records, first three records are inserted successfully, but the fourth record has been failed. Then just it will ignore the fourth record and then it will continue with the remaining records as it is here. It will continue with the remaining records as it is. Now out of these seven records, how many records are processed successfully? Six records. How many records are failed? 
one record how do we know in this case what records are processed successfully what records are failed to know that data loader will generate two output files to you data loader will generate two output files to you first one is success file second one error file okay success file error file as part of data loader it will generate two output files so it will generate two output files it will generate two output files first one is success file this is also dot csv second one an error file this is also a dot csv now it will generate two files to you as output one is success file second one error file then what this success file contains what this error file contains what are the six records processed successfully these three records and then these three records so the records which are processed successfully these records information will be writing inside success file what are the record has been failed that failed record information will be writing inside error file along with failure reason also why the record has been failed because of which field value the record is unable to insert it will be indicating the failure reason also so by end of this operation we can check how many records are processed successfully how many records are failed we can go to the error file information check why the records has been failed we can correct those mistakes enter the correct values and then we can reprocess only the failed records okay like for example it's not a new concept over here it's like as our okay normal concept for example come to a small scenario assume that next week i'm having my semester exams but the next week i'm having some semester exams are already it may be happening also whatever anything i have written the first exam very well definitely i will get 85% of marks in that second exam very well third exam very well the fourth exam today i have written but most of the questions are out of the syllabus okay out of the syllabus i don't know those answers i know definitely i will get failed in that year actually we did not go through the topics over here that is nothing but in our okay in our opinion that will be out of syllabus okay now so i was i would definitely will get failed inside that exam then what about the remaining two exams do we need to cancel no i would like to continue i would like to write those exams perfectly by reading that information more i will go through that information by sitting some more time i will i would like to prepare very well i would like to write those exams so once i'm done with this one finally we'll be getting some results okay at the end of this semester we'll be getting the results from there i got that result so in that one i got failed in one exam here i know that because i did not prepare well for the exam i did not written well so that's what i got failed whatever the exam that i got failed i will write that exam in the next semester also like as a backup so like the similar way here also we are going to processing the records upon processing this records if any of the record has been failed just it will ignore the record it will continue with the remaining records as it is so once the operations has been done it will generate two files to you a success file which contains all the records information which has been processed successfully and then an error file which contains all the records information which has been failed to process then i will go to the error file i will correct my mistakes also i will enter the right values i will process these records again okay so that here we can reprocess the failed records again as well here that facility is available clear when you go to this import wizard this kind of options are not available for data loader we are having two files will be generated one is success file second one error file clear now make a note of this one when processing the records data loader supports partial processing mechanism data loader supports partial processing mechanism that is if any of the record operation has been failed then it will ignore the failed record 
field record and we'll continue with the rest of the records as it is now data loader generates two output files as a result first one is a success file this is also dot csv which contains all the records which has been processed successfully second one in error file which contains the field records information field records information along with failure reason along with failure reason <coughs> done done with this points now let's see <coughs> the next point as part of this data loader for example i'm using this data loader to process this multiple records inside my object assume that i have placed 1000 records inside my file or 10000 records or 1 lakh records 2 lakh records whatever anything up to 50 lakh records we can place inside the excel sheet whenever we are processing these records by using this data loader will data loader will consider all these lakhs of records under a single transaction no it won't consider under a single transaction why because is if you are considering all these records under a single transaction upon processing the record if any of the record has been failed the all the previous operations will be getting cancelled here this is the fundamental principle of transaction because transaction will be having only one possible result either it should be commit it should be our successful back committing in the sense saving permanently in the database rollback means what cancelling all the previous operation that means what if you are processing some records if any of the record operation has been failed then the whole transaction will be getting rolled back automatically by default okay that is the problem so now tell me because of one record failure cancelling all the previous record operations makes sense no 
So in this case, I don't want to cancel all these records. That's what here, when coming to this okay, data loader, what it will do is, whatever the records that we have, it is dividing the records to various small, small pieces. It will divide. Whatever the records we have placed inside this Excel sheet, these records will be dividing into various small, small pieces that each piece is called as a batch. That each piece is called as a batch. So, data loader purely supports batch programming internally. What are the records we have supplied as input to the get process? Those records are dividing to the various small, small batches. Each batch it will take up to process under a separated transaction. Like, for example, simple concept here. Assume that today morning I went to a hotel just to have some breakfast. So, I went to the hotel, have ordered some food. So, now the food is available and in front of me on the table here. Once the food is available inside the plate, can we have the whole food at a time? No. We need to divide that food into the various small, small pieces. Take a piece, we can have it, and then one more piece, and then one more, and then one more, and then one more. We need to repeat this process till the plate is getting empty. Like the similar way, what are the records that we have inside this Excel sheet? These records will be dividing into the various small, small pieces that each piece is called as a batch. So the records will be dividing to the various small, small batches by data loader tool. Then how it is dividing that here? How many records are available? Data loader is supporting two APIs over here. Upon dividing the records to the various small, small batches, data loader supports two APIs. The first one is Apex API. Second one, Bulk API. Second one, Bulk API. If it is Apex API, okay, each okay, each batch will have minimum one record, maximum two thousand records. Okay, minimum one record, maximum two thousand records. Now, in between this range, we can give the size. How many records you want to consider per batch that we can decide. If you are not giving any batch size, by default, data loader will consider the default batch size as two hundred. That means if you are placing some 1000 records inside my Excel sheet, it will divide this 1000 records into various batches. First 200 records in one batch, next to 200 records in batch two, next to 300, 200 records in batch three, like that will divide the records to various batches. Once the records are available in the form of batches, it will take each batch, it will process internally one by one, one by one, one by one over here. This is the functionality here. Now, sometimes you can raise a question, sir, inside my Excel sheet, I have placed some 20 lakhs records, 20 lakhs records. So if I'm dividing them to the 200, 200, 200 like that, number of batches will be keep on increasing. So it will be taking some more time to process all these batches. Do we have any possibility to consider more number of records per batch? Yes, there is a possibility. For that one, we are using bulk API. As part of bulk API, minimum batch size is 1, maximum batch size will be 10,000, default batch size will be 2,000. This is the limitations here. So now if you are enabling the bulk API, now each and every batch can have minimum 1 record, maximum of 10,000 records. Okay, maximum 10,000 records. And if you did not give any batch size, by default, Salesforce is considering the default batch size as 2,000 over. Clear? Understood the concept now? Now. So in this case here, whatever the records we have specified, these records are going to be dividing to the various batches. For example, this is one batch records. This is another batch records. This is another Sir? batch. This is another batch. Like that, it will divide the records to various batches over here. Each batch, it will be running under a separated transaction over here. Clear? Now, let's see. Make a note Sir? of this one. Just tell me. Tell me, madam, what is the question? Sir, in the train also, we get error. What should we do? The whole batch will get cancelled. Same process. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, data loader supports data loader supports batch programming internally internally where it will divide 
divide the records into various sub batches various sub batches and will process and will process each batch will process each batch under a separate transaction under a separate transaction now while dividing the records to various batches various batches it supports the below two apis below two apis first one apex api in this apex api the minimum batch size will be one maximum batch size will be 2000 default batch size is 200 next if it is bulk api bulk api minimum batch size is 1 maximum batch size is 10000 default batch size is 2000 default batch size is 2000 Now, next. Data loader tool is available in the below two flavors. Two flavors. First one, data loader for Windows. Second one, data loader for Mac data loader for windows second one data loader for mac so then where exactly this tool is available here now let's see we have to download the data loader tool from the organization as below from your salesforce organization we have to download this data loader tool just you can click on setup menu Search for the option data loader in quick find box. In quick find box, click on data loader for Windows. Windows link and download the tool. To the local device and download the tool to the local device now so now let me show you how the data loader tool will look like data loader will support how many operations seven operations okay it supports seven operations now let's see data loader supports to perform the below seven operations First one, insert. Second one, update. Third one, delete. Fourth one, absurd. Fifth one, hard to delete. Sixth one, export. Seventh one, export all. These are the seven operations a data loader will support.
we have to aware of all these seven operations. But as you said, it is dividing into small pieces, right? Like small batches, right. right? Right. So if we wanted to find a specific file, a specific record. No, we can't uh -huh. find out. Because here we don't know which batch, which record is considered inside the which batch. We don't know. It's an internal process of data loader. OK. Done. Now, let's see where exactly this data loader tool is available. Let me show you. Go to the quick find box. Search for the option data loader. Data loader. So now, as soon as once you click on this data loader, it is indicating the information about the data loader tool. And then we are having these two flavors are available. Download data loader for Windows, download data loader for Mac. So these are the two flavors. Data loader will for Windows operating system, data loader for Mac operating system. So now upon installing this data loader, if you need any instruction guide, if you know some step-by-step -step approach, then we can follow this instruction guide for Windows. This is the instruction guide for Mac installation here. So Salesforce is giving the instruction guides also here for each and every flavor of data loader. Okay, now. So just we can click on this link data loader tool will be getting downloaded into a local system over there from there we can start utilizing that now let me show you how the data loader tool will look like now so now let me show you that so this is the data loader tool let it be loading here now so this is the data loader tool user interface so this is the look and feel of your data loader tool. So where we are having this, the seven buttons will be available here, like insert, update, absurd, delete, hard to delete, export, export all. These are the total seven operations we can do with the help of this data loader tool. Okay, now. So whenever if you want to use this data loader tool to perform the operations, first of all, we have to log in into the data loader first. With what we're using our credentials, which credentials already I'm having a Salesforce account. Now, through this data loader, I want to log in into my Salesforce account. And because my Salesforce account is allowing me to perform the operations on only one record at a time through page layout. But now I want to process some more number of records at a time. So I'm using this data loader tool. Through this data loader, I want to connect to my Salesforce organization so that we have to log in into the data loader tool. In order to log in into the data loader tool, we have to use your Salesforce account credentials. In order to log in into your Salesforce account, what are the username and the password that we are using? The same credentials we have to use inside the data loader also. But along with, we need one more additional key that is called a security token. We have to generate a security token. Through that security token, we can log in. That means your username will be exactly similar. But the password will be your Salesforce account password plus security token. Both we have to combine this supply to log in into your data loader, or else it won't allow. Or else it won't allow you to connect with your Salesforce organization. Without logging into the data loader, we can't perform any other operation. Let's see. Once you click on any button, also it will ask you to the login into the data loader first. Upon logging into the data loader, we have two types of authentication mechanisms. First one password authentication 
second one oauth authentication oauth means open authentication o means open authentication so in this case open authentication requires integrations okay it requires some integration with the salesforce authorization servers we have some salesforce authorization servers are available with that salesforce authorization servers we have to integrate get the access token through the access token only we can log in into the data loader through oauth authentication but right now we don't know what is integration how to do all these things so we can go with the help of the mechanism called as password authentication that means by using salesforce account username and the password we can log in for that reason it is asking you to provide the username and the password and then your login url will be visible over here so we have to specify your salesforce account username and the password along with security token also okay then how can we generate this security token we'll see okay we'll see what is the navigation for that here sometimes in the entry point of view they will raise a question in order to log in into the data loader we have to specify my salesforce account password along with security token also but now i don't want to provide security token without security token i want to log in into my data loader how there is a separate mechanism is available here for that one we need to configure universal ip address inside the users profile level inside the salesforce organization on that users profile we need to configure the universal ip address so which will allow us you to log in into your salesforce account from any system in the world just by using your salesforce username and the password without any security token how to do that we'll see that concept also here okay these are the two types of authentication mechanisms who are the authentication password authentication then how to do this one okay we'll see in the next session here okay in the next session we'll see how can we log in into the data loader how to perform these operations we'll see one by one okay now so now here shall we have the session tomorrow if everybody is okay yes sir. because last time i did the session on one sunday yeah. somebody has raised a complaint yes sir yes sir that's why sunday yes also. yeah that's why Actually, I'm not available tomorrow. You can see the because recording. Because after one week, because after one week, we are having some holidays for Dasara. Almost we yes. are going for one week. Okay. So now third and fourth, I will take up the sessions. Because actually, institute is completely closed from third to ninth. But I would like to take up the session on third and fourth through online. it should will not be available completely closed so that i would like to take up the session on third and fourth also on online okay from fifth onwards you can take an hour fifth to ninth will be having holidays that's what i want to use this time so tomorrow i would like to take up the session okay at 10 o'clock not at 11 10 o'clock we can come a bit early we can leave early okay 10 to 12 i would like to take up the session yes. tomorrow so please be available okay not every week okay only this week and if requests next week also because after that we are going for the vacation for five days completely that's what i want to use this time so that we can complete some more syllabus also here okay yeah if we are completing the syllabus a bit fast then we can attend the interviews a bit fast that's what okay okay, okay. please you. be available by tomorrow 10 o'clock Okay, tomorrow ten o'clock we have the classroom session as it is, online session also as it is. Use the same link to join the session. Okay, tomorrow ten o'clock. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you all. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.